Hi, welcome back to the channel, Michelle, and today I'm going to be doing a three-year update on our family being gluten-free. So if you're new here, my six-year-old daughter has celiac disease. She was diagnosed at three and a half. She's actually officially diagnosed May 27th, 2020. And I remember that because she had to be fully sedated and to be get an official diagnosis of celiac disease, you have to have an upper GI. So she was fully sedated for that procedure. They scoped her, they took tissue sample, all that. So it's burned in my memory because that was really stressful, not to mention it was the beginning of the pandemic, as you can imagine. So it was extremely stressful to have her go through all that. But I really wanted to make this video. I do update on this channel a lot about our journey with celiac disease, about living gluten-free as a family, because I didn't think there's a lot of resources or people talking about it. And it can be very difficult when you have a young child, especially dealing with that, or if you're just transitioning. So if you're newly diagnosed, or if you're a family member or a loved one or a friend is diagnosed with celiac disease, I really try to put informational videos out there that can be helpful to those people in the community and those who aren't in the community. I think it's also helpful now because I, as I have talked in previous videos talking about celiac disease, one of the biggest struggles we've had is the lack of information and knowledge that people know about celiac disease. So on this channel, a big part of me sharing is that journey. And I'm hoping it's helpful for those out there. So it has been exactly three years since she was diagnosed. So how are things going? I think it's important, you know, to share the journey, but I really wanted to share a video too, talking about, you know, how we are doing with it. You know, we've been a gluten-free family for three years. How's that going? Is it still as stressful as it was? The things I've learned along the way. As far as the outlook, the thing I would share, and this is something I share when people reach out to me who are newly diagnosed or dealing with this, it gets easier. Like many things, when you're first dealing with it, it's overwhelming. Getting a celiac disease diagnosis can be extremely overwhelming, especially when you don't have the greatest resources to kind of guide you with that. So when my daughter was diagnosed by a uh, pediatric GI doctor, and we were referred to a dietitian as soon as she got her diagnosis, but the dietitian, looking back, was not that helpful. And it's really unfortunate because you would think someone that works with a uh, pediatric GI doctor would be better to inform you, but that was unfortunately not the case. She gave us basic information. She unfortunately just did a really bad job explaining cross-contamination. And honestly, that's probably the biggest hurdle we've had to overcome with dealing with her diagnosis is cross-contamination. It's not the food, it's not, you know, finding swaps for different things or recipes or anything. It's cross-contamination has bigger, been our biggest issues for so things like pots and pans, cooking utensils. So we had cast iron pans, we had wooden spatulas, things like that. Things that hold on to gluten no matter how many times you wash them. So that was definitely a learning curve. Probably the largest one I think we have encountered is, you know, getting a handle on the food can be very overwhelming. We had to go through our entire kitchen and not only remove anything that had gluten, but also scrub everything down. Because again, cross-contamination is the biggest issue you're going to encounter. And mind you, I only did this one time. I did a thorough cleaning and everything. It took literally hours. I'm not gonna lie to you, it took hours. But once that was done, I have never, I don't have to clean extensively my kitchen anymore. But on top of that, we've also gone gluten-free as a family. And the reason we made that choice was because I didn't want the extra anxiety of bringing gluten to the house, having separate, you know, utensils for cooking gluten or having two toasters. I didn't want to do that. And that's a personal choice to every family. You know, I think it's also important that my daughter have a place that she can feel comfortable and eat whatever is in our pantry or in our house. Because the truth is, wherever she goes, whether a restaurant, friend's house, whatever, she will always have to question whether or not she can eat things there. I want home to be a safe space for her. That she doesn't have to think about that because that will be the rest of her life. She will have to constantly question, look ingredients, read labels, that will be the rest of her life. In our, our house, she doesn't have to do that. She knows what we bring in is safe. Now saying that, I did make a lot of mistakes along the way. And here's the thing, you're going to make mistakes and it's okay. One of the big mistakes I made early on 
is assuming I didn't have to read every single label and it wasn't super obvious. So wheat is a top allergen and that has to be labeled on packages, but barley and rye, which are also part of gluten, are not a top allergen and don't have to be labeled on products. And especially barley and rye can have different names than just barley and rye. They have different, you know, scientific names that food companies put in there. So it can be really tricky. So one of the mistakes I made early on is I bought vanilla ice cream and it didn't say it had wheat or it didn't say it had barley or rye in it. And I didn't think it was a big deal because vanilla ice cream, why would vanilla ice cream have gluten in it? But lo and behold, it did. Flip it around, vanilla ice cream can have wheat in it. And that brand unfortunately did. So you know, obviously check your ice cream, but it didn't occur to me because I think very early on you think, you know, bread, flour, things like that. You don't think necessarily ice cream, condiments, spices. There's a whole nother layer of it to celiac disease. So you really have to be diligent, especially early on reading everything and know you're going to make mistakes and it's okay. Learn from those mistakes, move on. I think in the last three years, We've been gluten free. My daughter has only been gluten or ingested gluten by accident one time. And that's pretty good. Well, probably twice the ice cream and then a pizza incident. But that's pretty good. But you're, it's okay if it happens. The point is not to live in fear of everything, especially you don't want to create that mindset of fear and anxiety when it comes to food. And that's something we've tried to cultivate. I also think my daughter starting off younger, um, being gluten-free has had some advantages as well. She doesn't really remember what gluten food tastes like. So she doesn't remember what, you know, regular bread tastes like or mac and cheese, things like that, which in some ways is beneficial because she doesn't feel like she's missing out that much. Well, my 10 year old, of course, remembers what it is. And here's the thing, outside this house, my family, you know, obviously besides my daughter with celiac disease, it's free to eat gluten. So if we're at church and they have donuts, they can totally eat it. If we're at a friend's house and they have something, yes, they can eat that. But we don't bring any gluten items into our house with the exception of my husband occasionally buys beer, which has gluten, but that's not coming in contact with my daughter, obviously. But other than that, we don't bring any gluten containing items into our house. It just makes it easier for me and Everyone else, I think it's okay to ask them to adjust because we've had to completely change our lifestyle since going gluten free. And one of the things that has really, I think, been hard over the last three years is realizing, like I said, people don't know a lot about it. A lot of people be like, well, there's gluten free options. You know, you can go to Culver's. So Culver's is a burger place in the Midwest and, you know, they have gluten free buns. That should be an option, right? No. So just because a restaurant sells something and you can substitute gluten-free buns, does it mean there's not cross-contamination in their kitchen, which is a big thing. Often fryers, things that they use for um, like the fries and stuff, if gluten or wheat has ever gotten into that frying machine, it's forever contaminated. Cooking surfaces, cooking utensils, whether or not the cooking service changes their gloves and things like that. So I think the one thing, once we got over this hump of, you know, reading our labels, getting handled our food, and that got easier, something we've struggled with is finding a place we can go out and eat as a family. And I'm going to share a story with you because I hope this gives you hope if you're struggling with that. So since my daughter's diagnosis, three years ago, we have not gone to a restaurant as a family for three years because we have not had any options. Now I live in a more rural area, but even going to the larger towns by me, so you know, if I drive an hour, hour and a half away, there's still very limited options. And just because the menu says gluten-free does not mean that is celiac friendly. And that's something I really want you to understand. It does not mean they're taking the proper precautions in the kitchen. It does not mean they're trained on the proper precautions on what cross-contamination is. Unfortunately, um, I found, at least in my area, that's not something that's routinely uh, the staff is trained on. I think people have a general understanding of anaphylactic allergic reactions, so peanuts, things like that. But people, you tell them you have celiac disease, most people don't even know what it is. Let alone if you say my daughter can't have gluten, 
That doesn't mean the gluten-free item. So you really have to, when you go to a restaurant, go down your list of questions to ask. And it can be intimidating and it can be, seems like you'll never find something, but I did want to share this recent thing. So we had this weekend gone to about an hour away to see a circus performance and we were really happy with it. You know, they didn't have any live animals or anything. It was like acrobatics and juggling and different clowns and things like that. But it was really fun. But it was later in the day. And since we lived farther away, I was trying to look for a food option for my daughter. Now, often when we go to things like family get togethers or farther away, I will pack food for us. And that's just, we always bring food with us, family gatherings. We bring food. There are people in my life that I trust to prepare food for my daughter. Um, that would be my in-laws and a family friend that understand and have read the things I've given them about cross-contamination and I feel comfortable enough that my child can eat if they prepare food. But most of the people don't have the extensive knowledge to know how to properly prepare. It's not just using gluten-free ingredients. It's using things that haven't come in contact with gluten especially cooking services and things like that. But I was looking for literally over an hour for a restaurant option that had gluten-free options, not just the replacement, but either had a separate fire, fryer, knew what cross-contamination was. And out of all these options I was looking at, only one of them, one of them had a kid's menu that had gluten-free options. And that's something that's really irritated me. A lot of people assume gluten-free is more of a trendy lifestyle. It's something for, you know, 20, 30 something year olds. There are people out there with medical needs that have to eat gluten-free. And a lot of that trendiness has actually done some negative things to the celiac community. And again, you don't often see, and, and you'll be like, well, why does it matter if it's a kid's menu? Okay. My daughter doesn't want sea scallops. She doesn't want the hoity-toity adult food. She wants, you know, a hot dog or mac and cheese or something simple, a grilled cheese, something simple like that. But it's not an option on children's menu. And usually the adult menu is larger portions and it's not necessarily something she would like to eat. And it's a struggle. And it really irritates me that those aren't included on kids' menus because there are kids out there that need those things. I think children, one of the diagnosis problem is because celiac disease can be very vague. Children are often not diagnosed or misdiagnosed and it can be really difficult. So I'm thankful that we were able to get a diagnosis as soon as we did. But when it comes to restaurants, that is so frustrating. So, you know, I made phone calls, I asked questions and there was one place out of all the things I talked to that I felt comfortable taking my daughter to. So the owner of this restaurant, was their wife has a severe anaphylactic wheat allergy. So they understand the severity of wheat, but also understand what gluten is. And on top of that, their staff was fully trained in cross-contamination and to the point where none of their fryers have ever been touched with gluten. They have an extensive gluten-free menu and they had a kid's menu that had gluten-free. Not only that, but the waitress her, I talked to her, you know, obviously I talked to her about my daughter's um, celiac disease. She told me her mother has a wheat intolerance and made sure to know that she understood the difference between intolerance, allergy, and celiac disease, because there's a big difference between those. And she was able to recommend things on the menu. And my daughter was able to get um, deep fried chicken, which is something she hasn't really had because again, fryers are usually an issue. And when the ketchup came out in a little dish, I had to make sure that it was gluten-free and the waitress had no problem asking and you know checking in the kitchen staff. And so she, my daughter stuffed herself with all the food options because again, she hasn't been to a restaurant in three years. They had an extensive gluten-free dessert menu. So she had a really fancy chocolate mousse and it was a wonderful experience. We got to eat at a restaurant with a, all of our family members. And I think people take that for granted. When you're living with food intolerances, food allergies, and autoimmune conditions, that isn't always a possibility. And it was great. And you know, I was very, I still had a level of anxiety because I think whenever you put your child's health in someone else's hands, it can be really stressful. 
But again, not living in that fear. You have to take chances. Again, do your research, ask the important questions, absolutely. But don't let your fear hold you back from living your life. And I think that is something that you really need to understand with celiac disease that you can, things might be a little different, you might have to ask a little more questions, but you completely have a normal life. So she did not have any reactions. She said she was actually, <laughs> the only problem she had is she ate too much. <laughs> Um, but she was so excited and she wants to go back to this restaurant again and again I made sure to really thank the waitress and explain the situation that we haven't been to a restaurant in three years and to please let the manager know and the owner know that this was really significant for my family to do something as simple as go out to eat together which just hasn't been an option so that is our most recent hurdle that we've been able to get over is eating as a family I know it's crazy <laughs> But it's things like that, that it takes time to, you know, learn ingredients and it gets easier. I can swap out most things without even thinking about it. Most products, I know exactly where the gluten-free item is. I know how to read the list. And what's more important is my daughter knows. She's six, well, six and a half, but she knows ingredient lists. She knows what labels to look for gluten-free. She knows to ask questions. She advocates for herself, which is really important because I'm not always there to speak for her, especially if she's, you know, in a situation where I'm not around. She needs to be able to stand up for herself and make sure she's advocating for her needs. And I think that's really important. She understands what celiac disease is. She knows how to communicate that to people. And I think that's really important. And she has some power in that. So for example, we were at a adventure fest today and at this adventure so like an outdoor festival it was they had food options you know you got a free hot dog and water for participating she obviously couldn't eat the hot dog and they didn't have any other options which is frustrating when public events don't have things like that but again i think people just are not knowledgeable enough or aren't willing to spend the money that it costs to be gluten-free i will link up above my gluten-free grocery haul for the entire month of May and how much we spent. It can get expensive. I totally get that. But she's feeling a little down. So we walk around the food vendors. Well, you know, my other half of my family ate the hot dogs and stuff. We walked around and I looked for options. And luckily there were a couple of options. There was a Dippin' Dots cotton candy um, food truck. And it said really big sign, which I really appreciate that they had gluten-free and dairy-free options because yes, there are people out there that need those options. So she was able to get a prepackaged thing that hadn't been touched by other people. And the lady there was able to inform me that her uh, cotton candy was also gluten-free. And I was like, yes. And then there was another place that she could get something that was gluten-free. But the majority of things, no, she couldn't have there. And usually I will pack a special treat or snack. For example, when we went to the circus, I knew she wouldn't be able to eat the popcorn there or any of the food pretzels or anything like that. So I made sure to pack her, you know, her own special chips. I made sure to pack, uh, pack a special treat. So she had jelly beans. So being mindful that when you're going into situations, always have, you know, something prepared just in case, because the honesty is you'll feel left out or they will feel left out at situations, but to make it, sure they understand it's not their it's not because of them there's nothing wrong with them unfortunately society always puts it on well this is your problem you deal with it. and that's just really unfortunate but i want to give you hope that there are situations whether you go to public events or family events that you can still have positive situations and frame it in a way that it's not something wrong with them that this is everybody has things they deal with and this is what she has to deal with and learning to advocate for herself i think is really important especially when you get into things like teenage years self-esteem confidence things are going to change and you're going to feel like you naturally feel like an outsider in those years put on something like this it can really make you feel isolated so i'm glad that we're learning those things as we go and we're getting the right tools to deal with the things we need but also educating those around us I think is so important and one of the things I so widely sh share on this channel because I want people to understand celiac disease better because it does affect a lot of people and even if it doesn't I think having an open mind and willingness to learn about others and the struggles they have is really important 
So when it comes to that three years, I say we're doing great. My daughter is doing really well. And I just want this to be that, you know, you'll get there. You might be in the beginning stages or you might be seeking a diagnosis and you're not getting the answers you want. And I've totally been there. I understand the struggle just to get a diagnosis, but it does get easier. It does get better. We changed our entire lifestyles and we've learned along the way. And I think we're doing really well. And have we learned everything? No. Things like travel, college, all those things are in the back of my mind of, you know, how do we handle these situations? Now, of course, take you along as we deal with these situations to be more helpful to the people living this lifestyle or living with autoimmune conditions like celiac disease that affect the things that you can eat. So if you have any specific questions about celiac disease, leave them in the comments down below. If not, thank you for following us along with this journey.